I'm like brother we were said uh he he led me to the Lord and I'm glad that I didn't cut your yard or you know I was talking about washing your cars I'm glad that you uh offer God instead you know and uh, that was the best choice of my life I want to pray before I get started uh Heavenly Father I just thank you on today I thank you for your love and your goodness uh, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity once again to be before your people. Uh, it's been a while, it's been a long time, but I believe that, Lord, that you, you see all things, Lord, and we go through seasons. And I thank you for the sitting down. I thank you for the learning to hear your voice. I thank you for, Heavenly Father, learning how to walk with you, Lord, even when we are in, in, on stage. And uh, Father, I just pray on today for the word. I pray that uh, whoever is meant to receive it, they receive it, that the hearts would be open. And I pray that no word falls to the ground. So, Holy Spirit, I just pray you have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I really want to share. Is I got to get it on my chest. Uh, I, I did not want to speak on today. I, there was about three times that I wanted to call pastor and say, yo, like, I, I'm not ready. I, I can't speak this Sunday. I, I don't want to. I, I, there's just a lot going on in me. I have a little puppy, and I... They, they teeth, so they like to bite a lot. And time to time, I play with them, but you can't play with them all the time. And he'll come all out of nowhere and just bite me hard. Wow. And I'll be like, yeah, stop. And I get mad at him. And because of that, the enemy begins to condemn you. Look at you. You have an outburst of wrath. And you want to go out there and speak? You can't do that. And so it was because of that I wanted to call. And then also there's other things I'm dealing with because obviously it's not just the dog that makes me have that. It's things that's going on in my life that, that are bottled up and I'm not taking them to God. You know, some things I try to deal with on my own. And so therefore I, I take it out with wrath, with anger. But then in the midst of the enemy's voice, there's always God's voice. And as I'm hearing you can't be out there speaking. I just hear the Holy Spirit, be angry, but sin not. It's okay to get angry. I just want to be real with y'all. I don't want to get out here and, and act like I got it all together because I don't. The Holy Spirit talks to us, though, and that's why it's important to get in this word because you always, you always taught me, Pastor, give the Holy Spirit something that he can draw back out of you. Imagine if I hear the devil all day telling me that, I can't be up here speaking, and I don't know that scripture, yeah. then I would have been condemned, and I would have called you. Yeah. Once again, the days pass by. Once again, I want to call you like, yo, Pastor, I don't want to do this because I'm dealing with this, right? And the enemy's in my mind, and then this is God. I, and this is how he talks to me. You really going to call him? He's on vacation? And I'm like, oh, dang. Like, God, I don't want to do this. That day on Thursday is when I wanted to call you, and that's when God tells me that. So that caused me not to call you. And I said, God, how can I speak to your people when I'm, when I'm dealing with this? Later on that night, I forget about it. The, day, the work day is over. My coworker comes in, and she, she came here before to visit. She's dealing with a lot of her family. Pray for her, right? A lot of religious things that's going on that's keeping her from coming here. She wants to come here, right? But we began to talk on this, and I have background with religious, you know, uh, religious background. And I began to minister to her, and, and at the end of the conversation, she goes, she goes, wow. She was like, I really needed that. She was like, I, you know, she, she felt a lot of peace in that conversation. I'm leaving the, the house, and the Holy Spirit says, that's how I want to use you. You see how I was able to use you right there? You didn't think of the fact that you were dealing with this, this, and that? You just allow me to let, you know, let me be God in your life. And I was able to minister to this girl. Saturday comes, and once again, I'm dealing with the same thing. I want to give up. Pastor, I'm like, man, I was about to call you yesterday. Like, I don't want to share this word. But all throughout the week, God has given me a word. And he's been dealing with my mind, and he's been taking me to Scripture. And he gave me a word, but I still don't want to give it because of what I think I shouldn't do. What we think we shouldn't do is not what God says you should do, and that's something that we need to really understand. I'm walking out of work yesterday, like, okay, uh, should I, should I not call? And then all of a sudden, my coworker, he comes up, and he's a believer. 
And he begins to encourage me in the Lord. And he begins to tell me this, this, and that, and the third. And he just begins to speak life into me. And I remember scripture once again. He that waters shall be watered. I'm in a time where I needed watering. And here comes this young man. And he ministers to me. Same man that two, three weeks before, month before, the Lord allowed me to encourage him. And that's the beautiful thing about the body of Christ, that we could encourage one another. Iron sharpens iron, right? This is the text that God or that pastor gave me. This is another reason uh, it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. When you, when you told me three weeks ago, I want you to speak, I said, oh, heck yeah, like, I got word. I got messages. I, I, I work on devotionals every time the Lord gives me something. Every time he reveals, I write. I said, okay. And I started looking through my notes. Pastor calls me. He says, I want you to come from John chapter 6. I'm like, I ain't never really studied that one like that before. And I'm like, dang. But I appreciate it because he was getting me ready in case I go to other places to speak. And they asked me to come from a certain text. I'm thankful that you did that. This week, I believe I learned a lot more than I have been just, you know, on my own studying what the Lord gives me on my own time, my own personal time with him. This caused me to really seek the Lord, and he didn't give it to me right away. Wednesday comes around, I'm like, Lord, I don't have nothing. He taught me how to wait. He's teaching me. He was teaching me how to wait, how to look, look out for his voice. And then one night, I'm going to bed, and I'm like, Lord, like, I don't know what I'm going to speak on. And then I thank God for Elder Thomas because everything's connected. Like, I just thank God how everything connects. Elder Thomas last week, he said, get close and see what the house is doing. Every Sunday, I go eat with my cousin. We go eat, then we go to uh, Gunther's, right? It's a routine that we have, and the Lord be blessing us. But because of the message last week, I said, Pastor, can I come meet with y'all? I don't always come meet with y'all. Um, I heard uh, Pastor William share some things that I've been needing to hear. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, oftentimes you ask the Holy Spirit, you pray to him, and then all of a sudden, a few mo moments later, you have thoughts coming into your mind. And that's how the Holy Spirit works at times. And it was that, that same thing came to my mind, and I'm asking God, like, what am I going to speak on? And then he began to speak to me after I had prayed. And so uh, I, I, I just thank God for everything being connected. John chapter 6 says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were deceased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. I want to point those two scriptures out and ask you to remember those two scriptures. Those are the main scriptures that... I'm going to be sharing the message from today. It's not, an, it's not a usual message that I share, but I need to be obedient. So I'll, I'll, I'll double back to those two after I read this text. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? I wanted to stop right there so I don't come back to all the scriptures. Uh, I want to tell whoever's here on today that, and I don't know who this is for. The Lord gave me this as I was sitting in the back. But it says that then Jesus lifted up, lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him. I don't know who it is for. Maybe it's somebody on live. Whoever it is for, Jesus sees you coming to him. And that's important to know because sometimes we don't feel seen. Sometimes we feel lonely. But in that text alone, honestly, I could stop right there just knowing that God sees you. Yeah. Knowing that God sees you should be enough because, like I said, sometimes this loneliness gets to us or it gets difficult as all these trials and tribulations are upon us. And we don't feel like God sees us. Yeah. But here on the text it says, a great multitude, uh, he said, the, then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him. And he said to Philip, nonetheless... Jesus sees you. So I wanted to stop there and share that with somebody on today. Keep coming to him. He sees you. Uh, verse 6. But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Now check out the two disciples, right? This is like us sometimes. And this is why I love God, because he chooses people just like us. Yeah. Chapter 6, by chapter 6, Pastor, Jesus done already did some things. 
He didn't already perform miracles. He didn't already perform signs, works, and wonders, right? We're in chapter 6, and look at this. Look at the disciples, and this is us sometimes. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. Do you hear the disciples' response? He said, we got this, but this might not be enough. At this point, I'm thinking, you're walking with him physically. You see how I do that? I try to justify the reason why I'm not like him. Sometimes we do that. But the disciples were just like us. They had the nary, they had the money, but he said, I don't think this is enough. There was still doubt in their mind. I'm seven years in this walk, and I promise you there's still a lot of doubt in my mind about what God wants to do with me and through me. Yeah. And for me, there's still a lot of doubt, and this is seven years in. Um, verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, here goes the other one. There is a lad here who has five barely loaves and two small fish. Ding, 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 ding. Nope, he's just like us. But what are they among so many? Once again, he doubted too. Jesus said he already knew what he was going to do. But here we go. I, I, and I'm glad that the word is written in this way because if he showed us them just being on fire and answering every call, then I, I wouldn't be able to relate to nobody. But thank God that I can relate to even the disciples that walk with him physically and actually seen him do miracles. Verse 10, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the man sat down. A number about 5,000, that's a lot of people. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed, the, distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barely loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the, the, the prophet who is to come into the world. I want to make one more point here before I go to, like, what I actually wanted to share uh, uh, from, from these texts here. I can't read reading it, right, because you asked to come from here, and so I'm like, man, I need, like, Lord, I need your help. But another thing that, that the Lord was able to reveal to me was his sovereignty. We're talking about 5,000 people. I don't know if you guys ever done that in your walks, but I've done this to where I'm like, Lord, I know you got so many people that's, that's coming to you, so many people to bless. All I'm asking is for, and God answers that. It says that there's 5,000 people, and he met every one of their needs. Why? Because that's who God is. That's his majesty. We could all be in different places, and at the same time, he's meeting all of us. That's the God that we serve. A God that could feed 5,000 at the same time. Yeah. So we're all saying different prayers. We're all here connected, right, through Jesus. He's answering all of our prayers. Why? Because he's sovereign. We all here got a different story, but it's Jesus Christ. He's sovereign, so he can be trusted. Yeah. I want to go back to verse 2. This is where I'm like, okay, Lord, those other ones are cool to share. I shared them. And then he's like, but I want you to share this. This is verse 2. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were deceased. What I want to share with that is, is that I had given this, this message a title. And the title was A Call to Action. I believe, Pastor, we were in dinner last week and, and Pastor Williams said, this is the beauty about sitting down with you guys, right? There's, there's so much wisdom there. I'm just, I was all ears. I was a sponge as, as I was taught. And Pastor Williams said there's going to come a time where people will need to get there early. You, you will not be able to get a seat if you come late. I believe that for this church. I, I, I want to say that I've been having visions of that in this church where, where God is working in a mighty way. 
So as I, as, as I heard Pastor William say that and then God shared this text with me, I want to present to you guys this next thing. And this is what I really believe the Lord wants to share with Gospel Center. I want to ask a question. You don't have to raise your hand or anything. I see it in a few people here at this church, but I believe that God wants to do more with more of us. And all he needs is a willing heart, a yes. He wants us to remove and operate in the spirit and not in fear. Sometimes that's all that keeps us from doing this very thing that I want to share. How many of you guys here in the past month or recently have prayed to God and asked him, help me to consistently operate in the gifts that you have given to me? I want to be the one to raise my hand and say, I have not done that. I've seen God operate through my life and done miracles, signs, and wonders, but I don't daily sit there and pray and ask God, what gives heart for me? What do you want me to operate in? And Lord, teach me how to operate in this. So the text I want to go to is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The reason I stopped there, and that's just how the Holy Spirit was giving it to me, because check this out, then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed. There were some things that Jesus did that caused people to follow him. I've been thinking lately of the way the world is turning around, really is burning around because there's a lot of evil going on nowadays. It's not like you came to me and you talked to me. You were operating in obedience. And those words did enough for me to, to be grabbed, right? And God drew me in. But there might be some people that words might not just be enough. And I was thinking, Lord, I don't want to be wrong and get corrected after church. But it's throughout his word. There's some who Jesus, the lady by the well, he came and spoke to her. I'm sure it was what, maybe the gift of knowledge or he was operating in that to where he told her, right? No, you're right. You have had five husbands. And he spoke to her. But then there was other ones where he operated in miracles, in signs and wonders, and that caused the people to follow him. So I believe that God is calling us to more than just being regular believers to where we come and we just read the word. We come to Sunday church. We come to, you know, studies. That's good and all. But even Jesus said, greater works will you do in my name than the ones he did. And then he said, you will be able to cast out demons, yeah. heal the blind, the sick, all these miracles, right? He said that we'd be able to do this. Yeah. But how many of you here are like myself? I don't ask him daily, Lord, help me to operate in these gifts. I've seen, I seen the operation of these gifts and what they can do, but I don't operate in them consistently. Consistency is something that we all need to keep our walk with God. To work in, the, in our gifts, it's consistency that's needed. I've been going to the gyms two, two, two days a week consistently. And it feels good. It feels real good. I was working out with this dude. He was big, real big. He said, how long you come? I said, well, right now it's been, uh, I, I've signed up a month ago. And then this whole month I've been coming two days a week. He said, don't stop. Keep building from that. He said, because you could come a whole month, Brother Jerry, you'd be able to, you know, testify to this. He said, if you stop a week, you got to start all over. That's pretty much how he was saying it. And so if this is the case for the gym, then what makes us not think that this won't be the case for us in our walk with God? In our walks and working in the gifts, but also in just in staying in relationship with him. I see this all the time. When I choose to give in to my desires... I'm back at ground zero. Lord, forgive me. He's got to encourage me again. Someone's got to give me a word. Someone's got to pray for me. And now I'm back. Why? Because I give in to the desires of my flesh. But if we could stay consistent, see, I believe that God wants to do something new in this church. And there's a fire that he wants to pour upon us. We just got to stay consistent and walking in the spirit. Um, Pastor always says this, and this rang with me all week. The word comes to you first. So I, I, I've, been, I've been doing what I, what my best from where I'm at right now to be first to listen to this word. 
First Corinthians chapter 12 says, Spiritual gifts, unity, and diversity. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. We all have a past. We all were led in different ways. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. That's awesome. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That's an important scripture. I'm going to read it one more time. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. I love, I love when I see people operating in their gifts. It makes me desire my own gifts. But they're not for me to look cool or for me to feel good. They're for the profit of the people of God. Because if we operate in these gifts then God's will will be accomplished. But they're not for us to feel good or to look good. I had to get that through my head. Because I love, I love when I see operation of gifts going forth. But it's for God's people and it's for the profit of his people. So, for to one is giving the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through that same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works, works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. This is why I'm saying, when was the last time you asked them what gift is for you? I can't tell you that, that this gift is for you. Maybe some are able to discern because there's the spirit of discernment, and they're able to discern that you might be able to operate in that. But at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit that gives it to you. So if we're going to ask anybody for a gift, it's the Holy Spirit. So... He distributes to each one individually as he wills. I wanted to share a couple of examples. Uh, I was, uh, just the difference that these giftings and operating in these giftings, what they can do. We were at Barnes and Nobles and there was this girl we were sitting next to, we were having a little meeting and there was a girl with her cousin and they were talking and we seen that she had a Bible and she had been trying to talk to him about God. And that was cool and all and, and you know, that got me excited. I'm like, cool. like. I love seeing that, right? And then all of a sudden, the guy gets up, and he, wa he walks away, but he had a cane. And the whole way, he was like, you know, he was just making his way. And I'm like, dang. And the, the Holy Spirit really prompted me to go and pray for him. Ever since I got saved and I started reading the Gospels, I believed that what Jesus was doing, because he said in his word that I could do it, I believed that we could do it. I just haven't operated in them consistently. I pray for people in wheelchairs, and they haven't got up. But does that mean that someone won't get up from a wheelchair if that person didn't get up? No. That just means I, I truly believe that because when I pray for those people, I have some doubt. I had doubt that, man, what if they don't? But I'm going to pray anyways, right? I believe that if you go with full faith, that God can do that miracle. If it's according to his will, of course. But... I believe that he can do it, nonetheless. If it's in his word, then he can do it. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm going over here. Guy's going like this. He's stopping. He's, he's a little bigger. He's stopping, and he's, you know, reaching to the counters, the books. And I go up to him. I'm like, hey, man, uh, I kind of overheard you and your cousin talking. I see you guys are talking about God. She was like, yeah, she's been trying to get me into it, this and that. She's like, but, you know, I don't believe. That's not for me. You know, she could save her time. Uh, I'll go back there. I just need to cool off. 
all right, cool. I was like, that's what's up. I'm like, hey, man, uh, you know, I'm a believer, too. I, I, I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm just wondering. Uh, I see you, you know, with your back. And I said, hey, man, uh, you think I could pray for you? He says, yeah, go ahead. He's like, I mean, what, I, what else I got to lose? You know, I've been like this for a long time. Uh, brother, you got a lot to lose because if Jesus moves, then your life might change forever. So you're losing everything, really. I didn't tell him that, of course, but, you know. I said, okay, so we're praying. And I began to pray. And the only time I had this faith was when my uncle Raimundo was in the hospital. You came and you spoke life over him. I thought you were weird for that because I had just got saved. And Brother Weaver's over there talking to my uncle like, Raimundo, wake up. <laughs> my uncle's in a coma. <laughs> like, what the heck? But I was new to the faith. But he's over here talking to him. And I remember you left and all that, and I was staying. I was going after work. And I shared this because it was the only time I had faith like this. My uncle died in front of me for two minutes. And I remember getting on my knees. My auntie got on her knees, and she looked at me, and she was like, he's dead. He's gone. I looked at her, and I started singing, how great is our God. And then I opened up my eyes, and the light was bright. And as I'm singing, doot, doot, he comes back to life. But I believed, and then they were looking for a vein in his hand, and they couldn't find it. And I, I told the nurse, I said, I said, try it one more time, because they were like, oh, we're going to go to different hospitals. We got to go get this medicine. I said, just try it one more time. You're going to find it. Lady hits his, his vein, boom, they find the vein. And they took like two to three days to get that. But it wasn't until I spoke that they were going to find it that they found it. So I remember all this faith that I had that day. And that was the kind of faith that the Holy Spirit was moving me in this time. I sit there and I began to pray for the guy. And it's all faith. And then I opened up my eyes. I said, man, by the time you walk out that door, you won't be the same. And he's like, he's just looking at me like. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I, literally, that's, that's how, exactly how it went. And he goes, what did you do? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, he lifted up his cane and put it on the wall, and he began to stretch. He began to go like this. He began to jump, and this is a bigger size dude. And he began to jump. He was excited. The reason why I share this is because it's, it's, I want to back it up to what I'm trying to say. She was sitting there trying to talk to him, and she said, that's, he said, that's not for me. As we walked back, she went to show her cousin, like, look what he did. He, he was calling me a magician. I said, nah, brother, this was all Jesus. You know, I'm pointing it back to God. Want to be careful with that. You got to point it back to God. I said, this is all Jesus. He looks at me because uh, we asked him, you know, if we could record that. And he, he looks at me. He says, man, he said, today you made a believer out of me. This is what I'm saying, the importance of operating in our gifts. I could have gone over there and talked just like how she tried to talk to him. Maybe he wouldn't have done nothing. But because I moved by faith as the Holy Spirit led me, yeah. we want another soul. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about, about the operating of gifts. I, I, another quick example I share with my sister. I, you know, I'm trying to work up this message. And I remember we, had, we now have Pastor Carvin here or, or uh, Prophet Carvin, right? And he operates in that gift, him and his wife, mightily. And I said, sis, I said, I, I need to ask you a question, you know, for tomorrow. And I'm like, what, what did it do to your faith or what happened that day? Because after service, when she came, what, like three weeks ago, maybe? I said, shout out to my sister and Jocelyn. They drove all the way down from L.A., praise God. And uh, we came over and all we were asking was for prayer. Just, just pray for my sister. And he began to move in his gift. And he began to speak some things into her life. He began to say some things that I was even shocked. When he began to say it, I began to cry. Like, oh, snap, you're speaking to her, but it's making me cry. Because I know that nobody shared that with him. It's God operating through him in his gift. She said, well, it made me feel like God saw me. And that's what I was sharing with you guys earlier. God sees you. What else did you say? You mind saying it aloud? Renewed? 
renewed. She felt renewed, refreshed, yeah. and she felt seen. And she said, I believe you said also, like, I, I feel like even though I don't know what's to come, that's what you were talking about. And that's what I'm saying. But Carvin was operating in his gifts. So I really wanted to share, uh, share that message. And uh, see, I go back to my notes. I thank God for pastor because you always teach us, like, don't always rely on your notes, you know. And, and I didn't want to. I just wrote a few things on here. Uh, an, another, uh, another call to action uh, I wanted to share was John, or no, not John, uh, verse 3. Because maybe some of us are newer in the faith. May maybe operating in the gifts to some of us is, is, whoa, that's over our heads. I'm trying to learn how to walk with God. But I, I want to share verse 3 with others because God, God got something for all of us, I believe. And verse 3 says, and Jesus went up to the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. The message of this title, like I said, is, is a call to action. Maybe, because I'm going to get on my knees faster, and I'm going to ask God, teach me how to operate in those gifts. I've seen myself operate in those gifts here at this church. I, I, I have a longing desire for that, and it's time it will come. But if not, we could always rely on this, verse 3. And Jesus went up to the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Maybe it's not operating in the gifts yet. But we could always sit down with somebody and share Jesus with them. Just like how he sat down with his disciples, we could also, who comes to mind as I say that? Call them. Talk to them. Maybe it ain't got to be right away about Jesus. But he says, he that's wise wins souls. Maybe it could start with ice cream. It ain't always got to be about, I had to learn that the hard way. Every time, everywhere I went, I always wanted to, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because I was so zealous for him. I just wanted them to know him the way I knew him. But God been teaching me, they got to want it themselves too. But we could always go and sit down with somebody. I, the Lord's been leading me to my old friends. We went and had a, a crab and lobster. And we sat down and I'm sitting there in front of him. And I'm like, man, my brother ain't changed not one bit. Like, man, but nonetheless, I just want to love on him. Nonetheless, I want him to know that I'm there. We didn't say not one thing about Jesus. Matter of fact, I went as far as I always ask, can I pray? But I know where he's at. I didn't even ask, can I pray? I just said, Lord, in my mind, as I, with my eyes open, Lord, thank you for this meal. And I began to eat. Why? Because I know that I'm going to call him again. I see my friend coming to this church. But sometimes they won't come to church. We are the church, so we got to take church to them. Then we'll bring them in here. So another call to action is just share Jesus with somebody. Don't be ashamed, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation for all those that believe. Yeah. So why should we be ashamed when that's the power of God? Yeah. Jesus is the way to the Father. Yeah. So why should we be ashamed of something that's going to give somebody eternal life? Yeah. So that's another call to action. Uh, I want to finish reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, because... Um, I believe that we all could do a part. I believe that God needs all of us. Uh, if you go back to before I read that, see, the Holy Spirit brings it back. And that's the, you know, Pastor, I, I love Pastor, man. He, he really, you know, he, he's been there, so he knows. Study, you know, he tells you to study, study, study. And uh, come prepare. You know, and, and when you do, the Holy Spirit is able to bring it back. Check this out. This really caught my attention. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down in number about 5,000, right? That's a whole lot of people. Check this out. 
maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but as I'm reading it here, this is how I received it. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. These gifts that I'm talking about, sitting down with somebody, God wants to place that on our hands to do it. He already did his part. He came and died for our sins. We were separated from God. Jesus came and he connected us back to God. That was his job. I was listening to a song last night and it said, he said, do you see us down here? Oh, Lord. And then he raps, 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 and then he, tri he changes it. And then he, he's in the voice of God and he says, what are you doing down there? And that almost made me cry. Because I was like, dang, sometimes I get so caught up in my flesh. What am I doing down here? I'm being a part of the reason why people don't come to Jesus because I'm so caught up in me. I need to do away with that, less of me and more of him. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Nowhere in this text does it say the disciples had a help. Nowhere in this text does it say that it was more than just the disciples. It says the disciples distributed to the people that were sitting down. So you're telling me that 12 people were able to reach 5,000. What more can we reach if we all just do our part? If we all just ask God, Lord, what is for me on today? If we say, Lord, teach me my gift and teach me how to operate in that gift. Whatever it is, wherever you're at with God. See, I'm just, I just came to share the message, but you know where you are with God. If you were to share that message with me, I'm the one to receive the one that I need to pray was my gift. And I need to get active. I need to get on it. A call to action. That's what this is. So I want to finish it with verse 12 and down. For, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. There's many of us here, right? But it's through Jesus we're one body. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. That kind of goes along with the Holy Spirit distributes as he wills. So he's placed us just as he's pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather... Those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Somebody that gets on your nerves but they still come into church, they're necessary. Check this out. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. I've been there before. I've done that. I look at the bigger names. I would rather rock with the names, but not the less honorable in the church, the weaker one in the church, the one that always, bro, you always got something going on. Then when I say this, I'm that person. I shared with Sister Melissa last week at the, I'm always at the altar, <laughs> like, dang. I don't even want to walk up no more because I feel like they're going to be like, here he goes again. But I thank God, maybe I didn't see it that way. Maybe I've been the weaker vessel. And guess what? Pastor still wanted me to come up here. Imagine what that's doing to me inside. How much more that wants me to do the work of the Lord. So, 
But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Somebody comes to you with something they they got going on, man, don't run from that. Suffer with them. Pray with them. Be there with them. Don't say nothing if you got to. Just sit there with them. Now, you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostle, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gift, and yet I show you a more and excellent way. And the next chapter is chapter 13, which is love. It talks about love. So that's where I want to end this message. Because I don't want to just encourage you to seek after a gift, but forget to love. Because if you seek after the gift and operate in the gift, but you don't have love, then you're just making a bunch of noise. And you're operating out of order with God. So I want to leave us on today with, let's make sure to love on somebody, to love on one another. And as we keep that in the forefront of our lives, let's ask God for more. I want more, Pastor. I want to know what gifts he wants me to operate in, and I want to get to it. So that's what I have for you guys. God bless.